L'Assemblée va maintenant entendre l'allocution de son Excellence et Game Gob, président de la République de Namibie. Je prie le protocole de bien vouloir accompagner son Excellence. Au nom de l'Assemblée générale, je tiens à remercier le président de la République de Namibie. Pardon. Au nom du président, au nom de l'Assemblée générale, j'ai l'honneur de souhaiter la bienvenue à son Excellence, M. H. Gengob, président de la République de Namibie, et je l'invite à prendre la parole devant l'Assemblée. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Mr. Antonio Guderes, the Secretary General of the United Nations, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Namibia congratulates His Excellency Shapa Korosi on your election as President of the 77th session of this August Assembly. Please be assured of Namibia's full support as you provide leadership during your tenure. Allow me to also extend appreciation to your predecessor, His Excellency Abdallah Shahid, for his sterling stewardship as president of the 76th session of the General Assembly. Mr. President, since attaining our political independence 32 years ago, we are proud of the work we have undertaken towards the second phase of our struggle for the economic independence. During this period, we have built a strong foundation for our governance architecture with emphasis on strengthening processes, systems, and institutions. Given these advances in effective governance, we are optimistic in our quest to deal with the triple challenges of inequality, unemployment, and poverty. Our impact plan, the Harambe Prosperity Plan II, which is accelerating the implementation of the national development plans, is fast-tracking our efforts towards Vision 2030. Since my term of office is coming to an end on 20th March, 2025, as a nation, and as a nation with a constitution that binds the head of state to two term limits, we have set in motion a process for an orderly succession to continue with our peaceful development. The ruling party, SWAPO, of which I am the head, is currently conducting primaries there is a real possibility that the next candidate of the Swapo Party for the national presidential elections will be a woman or a young male, of whom the male is from the generation that was never in exile. The presence of women in the line of succession is a demonstration of the strides we have made in gender equality with women presentation at 40% in the National Assembly. Moreover, 90% of our banks are helmed by women. Namibia is a child of international solidarity, midwived by the United Nations. Therefore, we are convinced of our solidarity and partnership as critical enablers of our developmental aspirations. Allow me at this juncture to thank the Secretary General for his comprehensive report on our common agenda, which carries clear recommendations on how to advance the SDGs and all existing global agreements through multilateralism, with the UN at the center of our efforts. I commend the Secretary General for his visionary leadership in proposing that we should meet in a summit of the future to reflect on challenges and opportunities that await current and future generations. Namibia supports the convening 
of this important summit at the earliest opportune time. Over the past few months, it has been encouraging to note the concerted efforts to shed a spotlight on transforming education and advancing SDG 4. Education is a sector that Namibia has consistently been prioritizing through the allocation of the resources, both human and financial, and the consistent prioritization of policy development. In the context of the recently concluded transformation of Education Summit, Namibia commits to transformative leadership, ensuring access to inclusive digital technologies and developing a strategy for innovative financing and resource mobilization. In Namibia, the education sector receives the la largest share of budgetary support, equivalent to 8% of GDP, and almost a quarter of the total national budget. The Namibian government offers free primary and secondary education, which demonstrates our commitment to prioritizing and expanding access to education for all. Furthermore, we are proud of the recent landing of the Google Equinor subsea cable, which lends itself greatly to changing Namibia's digital transformation landscape and narrowing our digital divide in line with our commitment to leveraging the fourth industrial revolution. In Namibia, we have set up the fourth industrial revolution task force, which recently made recommendations as to how Namibia can strengthen domestic capabilities to strive to derive optimal gains from fourth industrial revolution. In line with the recommendations of the task force, the government is currently developing a consolidated national fourth industrial strategy to provide overarching direction and multiple multi-sectoral planning. The strategy will prioritize education reform to close to fourth industrial revolution skills gap, cyber security, and expansion of ICT infrastructure and services. Mr. President, global debt is at an unprecedented level and interest rates are rising. This reality limits our fiscal space. As we talk about our collective aspirations, we should remain acutely aware of the vulnerabilities facing developing countries. Namibia's classification as an upper middle income country presents challenges with regard to mobilizing resources to finance our development goals. As I have been saying, taking our GDP and dividing it by a small population, thus deriving at high per capita income without doubt is flawed formula that requires urgent consideration. The formula does not take into account the vast income disparities between the wealthy white and the poor blacks, which is a consequence of 100 years of colonialism, colonialism and apartheid occupation. However, I am pleased to hear that a number of developing and developed countries are in agreement with this unfair classification, which denies countries like Namibia access to soft loans and grants, which are necessary to fight inequality and to leave many, many out of poverty. The choice of the theme of this session, code, solutions through solidarity, sustainability, and science, unquote, calls on us to deal with the issues that affect us all. Therefore, I'm confident that the unfair classification of countries like Namibia as upper middle income countries will enjoy priority. Over the past few months, we have witnessed stark geopolitical tensions, a reminder of the fragility of our world order. Threats to peace and security 
come at a great cost to the men, women, and children trapped in such situations. The Russia-Ukraine conflict is now in its seventh month with serious consequences for food and energy supply chains. Namibia believes that dialogue is the conditions in Aquano for the peaceful solution, resolution of any conflict. Our United Nations was created for the maintenance of peace and security and should lead a peaceful resolution in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Namibia is a member of the AU Peace and Security Council and chair of the SADC organ on politics, defense, and security cooperation, continues to demonstrate its commitment to regional and continental stability by advocating for the advancement of infrastructure for peace, democracy, and protection of human rights. In this regard, as a new chairman of the SADC organ on politics, defense, and security cooperation, I'm calling for peaceful general elections in the Kingdom of Lesotho on the 7th of October, 2022. SADC is also seized with the developments in the Kingdom of East Watini and the Republic of Mozambique. In that vein, I have commenced a process of dialogue with the leaders of East Watini, Lesotho, and Mozambique in order to ensure the successful implementation of SADC decisions for peace and stability to prevail in our region. I always say inclusivity spells harmony and exclusivity spells conflict. Africa is a continent of 1.2 billion citizens and the exclusion of Africa from the Security Council is an, is an injustice. For as long as the Council fails to reflect in stature and composition current global realities, it will not be able to adequately address global concerns. We therefore reiterate our call for the reform of the Security Council in line with the common African position. Mr. President, self-determination is a human right. The continued injustice meted out against the people of Palestine are a reminder of the urgent need to start implementing the two-state solution as the only viable alternative that can end inequality and bring peace to both the people of Palestine and Israel, and indeed the region as a whole. In the same vein, the lack of progress in implementing UN resolutions to resolve the question of Western Sahara should, should be something that we must all have a collective shame for. Namibia pledges unwavering solidarity for nations that continue to bear the heavy burden of sanctions. Namibia reiterates its long-standing call for the lifting of the unjust embargo against Cuba. I met, I met a 50-year-old young Cuban man who has not known anything but the sanctions. Since he was born, it's a sanctions. How long are we going to continue with that? We are talking about building the peace in the world. But how can a country be sanctioned for such a long time? And children born don't know anything but sanctions. Please, it is time that sons and daughters of Cuba are given right, their right to a decent life, freedom, and embargo that denies them their right to develop their own country should be stopped now. Equally, we call on the lifting of sanctions against the Republic of Zimbabwe. Why are the sanctions in place for a country which is making progress at all levels? President Emerson Menangagwa and the people of Zimbabwe have made laudable progress and reforms. We should be given a chance to succeed without the weight of sanctions. Mr. President, the health of our planet is in serious jeopardy. Our home is on fire. We are experiencing unprecedented impacts of climate change, including severe droughts and ravaging field fires. Time is a luxury we do not have. We have to act decisively to reduce carbon emissions 
as our contribution to the preservation of our planet and the people. Namibia, like many developing countries, remains vulnerable to the asymmetrical impacts of climate change. Therefore, at COP27, Namibia plans to announce major developments in its ambitions to decarbonize global hard to abate sectors through the production of green hydrogen. Furthermore, the first hydrogen to power project in Africa is expected to be operational by 2024 in the town of Swakopmund in Namibia. This is an example of what is possible when we pull together in the same direction. Our ambitions are not only necessary to mitigate the ravaging, ravaging impacts of climate change, but are also a critical component of our post-COVID-19 economic recovery. Therefore, Namibia remains ready to work with the international community to ensure the most optimal utilization of its natural resources to combat climate change. A just energy transition is about fair opportunities for developing nations to sustainably access natural endowments at their disposal. Namibia has recently discovered promising deposits of hydrocarbons and is exploring significant deposits of rare earth metals. As part of our goal to ensure sustainable utilization of our natural resources, I recently launched the Velvicia Fund, our nation's sovereign wealth fund. The fund is a demonstration of our commitment to fiscal prudence and sustainable resource management for current and future generations. Mr. President, in conclusion, today on the 21st of September, 2022, we are convening in this chamber on the United Nations International Day of Peace under the theme, quote unquote, end racism, build peace. Peace is a wonderful gift but a fragile one if it is not handled properly. Peace is more than the absence of war. Peace is about inclusivity and development of all nations. Our United Nations, as the premier guarantor of multilateralism, is our best bet to ensure a peaceful and prosperous humanity. Namibia will continue to, play, to place a high premium on the noble aspirations of the United Nations as a beacon of hope and equality, hope and equality of all nations. As a beneficiary of successful multilateral efforts, which we hold in high regard the convening power of this August Assembly, and recommit to working with fellow member states to change the world for the better. I thank you very much.